So we are here with Lori and Eric. We're right in East Palestine. Uh, many of you might have seen Eric before on the channel. He's done some interviews with, with Jordan. Um, this is Lori's first time on Status Q. Yes, so th thank you for, uh, for taking the time to chat with us. Um, I guess, uh, so, you know, uh, Eric, when Jordan's talked to you initially, a lot of it has been kind of surrounding how difficult it was uh, for you to get some of these vinyl chloride tests. You yes. put up a kind of a big fight to be able to, to get them. We'll get to that in a little bit okay. here, but I kind of want to almost start from the beginning. Um, you know, we're fairly close to the tracks here, um, right in downtown East Palestine. We're, we're 0.3 miles away. Um, the railroad tracks is one street over from yep. where we're at. Yep. So I, I imagine, you know, uh, let's go back to the very beginning, night of the derailment. I mean, were you, were you home? How did you first find out about this? I was uh, standing on the porch smoking a cigarette. I heard the, the train derailed. It actually shook our house. I was like, I came in, I was like, what the hell is that? Everybody thought it came from the street behind us. Um, so instantly I kind of knew what was going on. I didn't know to the extent of it. Um, because I was watching the train go down and I see it all the time with these chemical, you know, these tankers on it. Um, so when, when it happens, you don't understand, you don't get the gist of how severe it is. Mm -hmm. So I came back in, um, I said, you know, I think the train derailed. Um, by that time, um, the cops <laughs> went down the street, the sirens were going off, um, it, the first responders were back and forth, back and forth. I got in the vehicle at first because I wanted to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. They told me it was at the other end of town. So I drove there, then I seen all the EMTs going this way. So I instantly come back. I didn't go down that way. Mm -hmm. I came back, and like I said, what was it, 15 minutes later um, from me returning, the police officers were coming to the doors and telling us to evacuate. Wow. We had six people, seven people in the house at the time. We had um, four foster kids, the grandbaby, me and Lori, and her son. And two big dogs. And two big dogs. Yeah. So they told us we had like 10 minutes to get out. We were, we were like probably one of the, the first people to evacuate mm -hmm. them knocking on our doors because um i think we were out of here it happened like say around 9 10 whenever we were out of here by 10 o'clock mm -hmm. um they have they set up a place at east palestine high school where you could go to for shelter and that wasn't even like an option it, that right. wasn't even established at that point so um we left with pretty much nothing. Right. Um, yeah, and you don't know at that point, you know, how long it, it's going to be, it, what the, you don't know anything. Well, right. she, so she has a pacemaker and defibrillator, mm -hmm. so she's on medication. Some of the foster kids were on right. medication. Right. Um, so it, yeah, you got to be cautious. And you we were more out. or less in our pajamas, you yeah. know, and it, it was like, so we flew up to Columbiana because that's the closest hotel that I could think of at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And we were going to come back and get the dogs. Mm -hmm. So he can't. He tried to come back into town, and they would not let him back in. They were like, "Too bad, leave you." Wow. You can't go back mm -hmm. in. So, my dogs stayed here almost two days by themselves. Um, I did sneak back in town to feed them. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then it got so expensive up there. Um, it was uh, when we first got there. It was one hundred and eighty dollars. Mm -hmm. um, so I used my military discount. Took it down to one hundred and sixty. Um, we but still, we had to have two rooms. Right. Be, yes. Because were, uh, how many of you? Well, we also had a female had foster care, and then a female that was seventeen years old. We had a male that was sixteen and mm -hmm. seventeen. So we had to have separate rooms. Separate any rooms. room. Anyway. So yeah, it got very it got very expensive, and uh, I had a friend that worked down in Lisbon, mm -hmm. um, so she gave me her discount. So we ended up going down to Lisbon. Gotcha. So it already needed to bounce around to different hotels. It, even, it started, out, by, it started yeah. out bouncing around. Yeah. 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 It did. So yeah. then, you know, on the, I think it was the, the ninth, um, yeah, the ninth mm -hmm. is when DeWine comes in on press conference and says, um, he was supposed to be at the, con it was supposed to start at three o'clock. Mm -hmm. It didn't start till five. Mm -hmm. So at five o'clock, he says, "Hey, everything's fine. You guys can come back home." Um, five twelve of the first train rolled through. 
Yeah. So, you know, we didn't come home the very first day. I wanted to have them come in and test <laughs> the air. <clears throat> so they actually came the on the tent okay. and test like they were we were one of the right. first ones to test and, and of course, the residential air tests that they're doing and, and, right? the, yeah. and the whole thing was is when they came in and i looked at the paperwork because she stayed at the hotel mm -hmm. i seen their machines and i worked a little refactory so i kind of knew what the machines were mm -hmm. and they were testing at point one mm -hmm. and instantly i was like there's no way because what everybody's saying this is in the billions millions mm -hmm. and stuff like that i was like there ain't no way that they're testing right it yes. took it, it seriously took them maybe 10 minutes i got a six bedroom house mm -hmm. um it took them probably 10 15 minutes at the most mm -hmm. to test my whole house right my basement has four or five rooms and it just alone mm -hmm. in the basement so as we know that the chemicals that were that were um exploded or mm -hmm or whatever you know that mixture this five chemicals has never been blown up at the same time before right right so how do they say it's safe there's nothing to compare that to um agreed and not not even be even beyond that um at this point and and even within a couple days at that point they would have known you know I, i've been speaking with a chemist on a lot of this stuff um, even just vinyl chloride alone, when you were to just set it on fire, the chemical byproducts of that include all sorts of things ranging from formaldehyde, phosgene, which is, we'll, we'll talk about phosgene. You've got a prescription for a phosgene test yes. that we'll talk about in a little bit. So, uh, uh, formaldehyde, phosgene, hydrogen chloride, dioxin, all sorts of these things. Um, the devices that were being used for in-home residential air testing, uh, the experts I'm talking with say that you can never test for phosgene with it. That device will not pick up phosgene okay. regardless of the level. Uh, it cannot pick up formaldehyde unless it has a special attachment on it. Um, if that special attachment is on it, it can't do the test for and vinyl chloride and VOCs. It can't test below 0.1. Right, and that's and that's another major issue. And, and some of these chemicals, their action level is below 0.1 parts per million. Yes, exactly. um, the EPA official Mark Derno at one of the town halls that happened a couple weeks ago admitted that with I, I'm acrylate. the one that asked the question. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so because I kind of knew that it was it was crazy, and then you know I asked. We had that meeting the other day about mm -hmm. the air, and I also asked. I was like, he's he. They have a new machine they brought in. They're supposed to be tough. I said, can you bring that into our house? Well, there ain't no sense in it. I'm like, what do you mean? There's no sense in it because we're still sick we're mm -hmm. still testing for you know positive for vinyl chloride well we don't understand why everybody's testing positive for vinyl chloride and he can't give we had him stuttering you know the, the guy he's the only one out of the whole epa though that has gave a little Some bit uh, a little bit of right right i was surprised i mean and good for you for going in and asking that question i mean there there was a lot of good questions asked at that town hall meeting there yes. weren't a ton of people in the room but you all got a lot of questions now asked the other you know, so. the question i asked at the epa thing the other day was or since he said that they was going to change the increments mm -hmm. um i asked him if they was going to do the other side different and he he admitted yes they're going to do the other side that's different. good and you're talking about just for folks uh the the track removal the the first side of the tracks that they removed and they're basically done with that at this point is my understanding yes. and they're flipped to the other side mm -hmm. they basically removed almost a half a mile of tracks yes uh dug all of that contaminated soil out um which essentially leaves a, a half a mile scar in the middle of town with contaminated soil more apt to be open to the air um, mm -hmm. which could potentially be leading to why folks are testing positive for vinyl chloride still well we uh, had our te we had in, our homeowners insurance i believe i we i believe that so we like he was gonna say our homeowners insurance came in and tested early, mm -hmm. like real early, um, in February, and you know we may not have been exposed to the fallout mm -hmm. of that at that time, but with them digging up this contaminated mm -hmm. soil for months now, um, I believe. If they would come back in and test homes, they're gonna see that the results are are way different than they were initially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
But un unfortunately, the tests that they did initially as well, you weren't going to find, like we just talked about, you're, you, were, you they were what they were using, they weren't going to find anything. Yes. They really should have been using higher sensitivity instruments. They should have been literally like swabbing surfaces and whatnot from the, you know, and that's what, when some of these independent testers are coming in, uh, and I've, I'm actually, there's a lot of information that I need to go through with an expert on it. We're actually getting some independent residential tests in at this point. Um, still kind of sort of. We got our surface pieces. testing yeah. done on the outside and inside. Mm -hmm. It came back negative for anything. Okay. Um, That's I, why I'm saying I think we did it a little bit too soon okay. because, you know, um, our house is not have a, it doesn't have a furnace in here, mm -hmm. so we're not drawing no nothing on gotcha. from the outside. We have boiler heat, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean it's it's a it's something that we're gonna see, and I would say that every house is gonna be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, some houses in one part of town might be okay. Some houses that are close to the creek might not be okay. Some houses that were close to any of the aeration might not be okay. Closer to the derailment might not be okay. Um, it's it's gonna be very touch and go. But a major issue is when you're not using devices that are accurate enough. You're not gonna you're you're not gonna know for sure. Um, I'm curious. Uh, Obviously, lots of folks have had all sorts of different health effects from all of this, whether it be from being in your home, being it around it in town, being around it at work. Um, have either of you experienced some of these things? What personal experiences? The metal have you taste, the the burning eyes, the sore throat, um, blood blood in my nose. Um, it feels like water in my ears. We actually was waiting for our test results to come back, so we went down to Florida mm -hmm. because they took our our foster kids out. So it was just me and her. Mm -hmm. um, we went down to Florida. Um, the second day I was down there, it was like a detox. Um, I. I was so sick. I was shaking, shivering. Um, it, it was bad. Then when we returned from Florida, it took about two days for me to get better down there. When I got back, as soon as we got back into this house, within an hour, the splitting headaches. Mm -hmm. that, that's the biggest thing that I knew something was wrong because I've never had a headache in my life. Like, never. Mm -hmm. And these headaches, um, if I leave town to go to Lisbon, Columbiana, whatever, and I come back in, for the first hour, I'll get the headaches. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that, you know, people are not having some of the symptoms, like she, her skin is, you know, she has a um, problem with the skin. I worked around cement and stuff my whole life to lie. Mm -hmm. I don't even get poison ivy. Mm -hmm. But the, the fact is that people get immune. I think they're getting immune. If you're here long enough, some you of these symptoms, it, yeah, you're getting used to it. It's like, you know, any anything in, in this world, you, you become used to it. My mother comes back into this town and she gets sicker than an adult. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, had, I, I had chemical bronchitis diagnosed, chemical bronchitis. Um, and this I, was before they, they quit doing the chemical, putting the chemical in front, mm -hmm. because as soon as we started having these symptoms, we went and got checked. So right. the things on her record is chemical. chemical. Yeah, it's I, I was diagnosed with um, contact dermatitis due to chemical exposure. I mean, that's what it says on my medical record. Mm -hmm. um, as well as the chemical bronchitis. Yes. Right. So... You know, they they gave me all kinds of medication, did testing, blood work. Um, this was, you know, right when it happened, I I got the uh, the skin issues. So what's happening is I get blisters and they run their course and then they scar and it comes back. So uh, they're saying it's systemic and they're sending me to a few specialists. Um, they actually did a, they're testing my genes because they think maybe, you know, uh, I don't know which one it is, vinyl chloride. I, mm -hmm. I'm not a chemist or a scientist, yeah, but it's okay. s something like, you know, it gets into your, in, into your um, adipose tissue. Okay. Am I saying that right? So they're thinking, you know, this is like stuck inside somewhere and that's why it's coming out. When it rains, I go outside, I get blisters. If I take a shower, like... Mm -hmm. And this is, these are things that 
this didn't happen to you before no this. no right no so this never. is you're I, now getting I these blisters and you mentioned you have some photos we'll make sure we put some up for, for yeah, folks absolutely. to be able to see it as yes, well yes. Um, so you weren't having these issues before no um, now you're getting blisters skin issues diagnosed with chemical bronchitis uh, even the skin issues they're, they're diagnosing it as chemical like at, because of chemical exposure yes yes um, and, and that's not even to mention the the mental Mm -hmm. anguish oh yeah uh that i've gone through um if someone told me three months ago today that tomorrow your life is going to change forever i would not have believed them because you know tomorrow will be the three month Mm -hmm. anniversary uh, anniversary of them destroying our town Mm -hmm. or so and so it seems to me, and we can kind of transition into talking about the testing a little bit. So, uh, your doctor seems concerned about some of this stuff. If they're having, you know, potential testing of genes and and getting into tissues and and this sort of thing, um, you actually have a prescription here uh, for urine testing for vinyl chloride. But in addition to that, uh, urine testing for benzene and phosgene. Yes. Um, I've uh, heard about some benzene testing being done. I haven't heard of any phosgene testing being done no. um and this is actually at through mercy health too um, yes we, which... we raised we raised i raised the stink when i <laughs> went down um yeah i guess well let's talk about that and then we'll get into the kind of the specifics of okay. testing so how you know i know you've talked with jordan a little bit about this but but for folks who didn't see that um what was that process like of trying you know you wanted to get a vinyl chloride test the process was asking the same question over and over and over and getting little bits increments from each time I asked the question mm-hmm. I played really stupid when I was down there um, they they kept on giving me the same thing the CDC um, there's a time frame that this is supposed to be you know in our urine mm-hmm. well people test them positive for it so obviously there's no time frame mm-hmm. we're still being exposed I talked to the toxic Columbia County toxicologist mm-hmm. I talked to so many chemists and, and toxicologists you know they threw up um, vitamin b12 they threw up shampoos deodorants um, me smoking a half a pack of cigarettes a day which is in the nanograms you would have to smoke 20 packs of cigarettes a day to test positive to test positive and yeah. even at any level that's not even saying what you know the 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 reporting level was 0.5 mm-hmm. two months out the EPA changed that and lowered it down to a point two. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all on camera. Him saying that, mm-hmm. so there's still, um, you know, there's there's people testing now as high as point nine. Right. Yeah, and that's uh, I spoke with uh, resident Chrissy Ferguson yesterday, and hers hers was in the point point nine. It was the highest I had seen. Yes. Um, it doesn't surprise me, unfortunately, when self, you know, she she works close to the tracks. Uh, she was close to it. Her backyard is sulfur run essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, fortunately she's been able to stay away from there for now. Um, but she spends a lot of time in town because of her work. Um, yes. and, uh, you know, uh, just like many other people who are, you know, whether they're staying in town every day at night or not, they're still having to come here for work. Kids having to come for school, uh, things like this. So. When I talk to the toxicologist, we have to get and this tested. This is from Columbia County. Yes, right? yeah. we have to, and, and this is just not them. This is everybody that I talk to. We have to get tested more than once. Mm-hmm. This stores yes. in our fat. This stores in our fat. You know, I'm kind of bigger guy. Um, so we might test 0. 0.5 today, mm-hmm. and tomorrow go take the same exact test and and test at 0. 0.9. It mm-hmm. depends on what so, our body's releasing. So piggybacking off of that, uh, we we did a news conference yesterday, mm-hmm. and someone there, um, she actually uh, had had a second test. Okay. And it was double. Wow. What it was originally. Yes. So, you know, and these I, are the vinyl chloride you're in. This is the oh, vinyl yes. chloride. Um, yeah. So, you know, um, and sh- and she lives the, at ground zero, right. pretty much. Uh, yeah, and it's it's tricky because the so the CDC, uh, in their guidelines, I, I read through some of them uh, yesterday, and I've read read through them a, a bit before. We have like a couple bullet points from it was actually from a document that uh, Senator Sherrod Brown's staff had had put together for him um, for a meeting with residents in East Palestine a couple weeks ago. Uh, we got the document and a couple of the points that they outline as to why the CDC, say, CDC is saying for some reason that you shouldn't get this test 
Um, a couple of the main points were uh, the data is difficult to interpret. Um, well, like you can say that that's a joke because all of the testing data that has been provided to you all by the EPA, by other federal agencies, has been extremely confusing. Um, the, some of these things, I'm, I'm, you know, giving them to chemists with PhDs and, you know, uh, folks like Dr. Welton are looking at them yeah. themselves and having to answer questions for people like you all. Um, and, you know, even folks like Dr. Welton, other sources I'm talking to are saying, this is very confusing. This is taking these experts a lot of time to go through them. So difficult to interpret should not be a reason not to do, do a test. So um, you get, so you get the positive, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So he tested positive. Mm -hmm. Doctor says, well, call the toxicologist. So you call the toxicologist. Mm -hmm. They tell you to call... Poison control. Poison control. Poison control sends you to CDC. CDC sends you somewhere, up, somewhere else. No one is giving us answers to what now. Mm -hmm. So now I'm we're positive... Now what? Now what? I went down and took my test results because at first I went to the EPA and they're the ones that gave me the toxicologist's number. Mm -hmm. So they sent me over, well, did you go to this little thing that they set up, this little, I don't even know what you want to call it, but I go in Medical there. Medical clinic. The clinic. All right. um, they, they gave me an attitude, like you you tested positive for vinyl chloride. It's in the, the, the limits. I was like, listen, there is no vinyl chloride that's within what limit? What baseline are you people right. going right, off of? Right, because they say that there's no baseline. Yeah, that, that, was yeah. another, that was another thing the CDC was like, well, we don't have a baseline for... It's like, okay, it, there shouldn't be vinyl chloride in your town. Let's get a baseline of people who don't live close to here and then compare it. So I'm going to use my high, kind of high level mm -hmm. baseline. And that's yeah. what I'm going to use. Yeah. And we're going to go off of that baseline right. is what I'm essentially going to do. And well, someone, someone that lived 2.9 miles away mm -hmm. tested positive for mm -hmm. vinyl chloride. Right. You know, so it's not, and we're talking months, mm -hmm. months later after the, right. this happened. Right. There was actually a kid because, it, like I said, they used a cigarette, vitamin B12, water, right. the drink in the water. Well, there was a kid that is in high school, mm -hmm. an athlete. Athlete, yep. That you probably heard about it. Yep. Um, so you know he tested positive. Right. Eighteen year old kid tested yes. positive for vinyl chloride. Not smoking cigarettes. I'm gonna not, tell you, you something. Know, he ain't yeah. drinking water out of the sink. Yeah. Because you know they can use that PVC. Does you know the plastic bottles that we're using? Mm -hmm. for, for, you know, we don't get no answers. Right. And and another major issue with this too is. To your point, people should be, you know, it, it's not like, the test isn't perfect for a one-time test, right? No. To your point, it should be done multiple times over. Uh, $900 and, a shot. Well, which is ridiculous though. So like when they, you mentioned the clinic, right? Uh, if, if there was any sort of plan when this thing happened, which to me at this point, it's pretty clear that there was no, like there's not a good cleanup plan from the EPA. Yeah. I don't know what the purpose of these agencies are if not to have a plan for when things go awry like this. Uh, and we've seen it in other places even since then, they clearly don't have a plan. That's a whole other story. But so if they had a real plan and were talking with the right people when this initially happened, when the governor, you know, touted his clinic that he opened, clinic uh, here in East Palestine, the major thing that they, you know, a couple major things they weren't doing were, you know, providing any diagnosis, uh, providing any sort of medications or anything, mm -hmm. but they weren't doing any testing. No. Uh, if I think that's what they're doing now is they're, and this is my opinion, mm -hmm. They're covering it up because if they would come out now and say, hey, listen, you guys are testing vinyl chloride. Right. It's coming out of the ground. Mm -hmm. It would blow everything that they said for, mm -hmm. for the last three months yeah. out of the water. Right. And they, they can't do that. And ima I mean, imagine, though, if we had the, the data of, OK, even if we just did it with a couple hundred people in town, you go to that clinic once a week, do a urine test. They go and process the sample, which will take some time. That's fine if it takes yeah. some time. Imagine all of the data we would have now if even 100 residents did a yeah. urine test once a week from from the week after the derailment until now, all of the information we would have, that would not have been that hard to do. I'm sorry, but the resources of the federal government, like they can they can make that happen if they wanted to make it happen. Right. They clearly didn't want to make it happen in my opinion. And and now here we are. My biggest question is when are they gonna file for a disaster? Mm -hmm. Because this is the biggest disaster besides 9-11, maybe the Oklahoma bombing. This is right up there, right. you know, not not to the extent, right? But it, but we don't crazy. know. We don't, we don't know. know the extent. Yeah, it's, right. It, there it, is so many people that have not even that 
have tested positive that's not coming forward. There's people that are very sick, you know, and are not speaking out. Mm -hmm. You know, they, it's, it's astronomical to think of the elderly that is in the community that's and then not being a fair taken care of. of the month, you know, where they had an Easter egg hunt while Dr. Ty's down there and showing the chemicals are coming from the creek. I brought that point up. They dug dirt. They, they say that it's not contaminated. I beg to differ because I've seen them. I got pictures that they're digging up alongside that creek mm -hmm. and they take it up to our city dump and mm -hmm. they, they dumped it. It's like they're doing this, and to me, they're doing it right in front of her face because they're like, there's nothing you can do about it. What can you do? I'm going to prove something to this town. There ain't nothing you can do to fight this system, mm -hmm. and, and that's the system we're fighting. And we can we can put this out there, and this you got you guys and certain ones. The media is more or less left, besides mm -hmm. a, a few unions, and you guys are our only hope. And, and I thank you. You thank me for having you come in. Mm -hmm. No, we thank you for coming in. Yeah, I mean, uh, and and I want. I mean, it's it sucks that you know there there've been little bits and pieces where the other media will come in and do it, but. Uh, it's it's terrible that you know they it, shut it, us off. Around they only yeah. they only will put out to the public what that media like twenty seven news. Yeah. Or 20, they will only put out that little segment yeah. of you saying one little thing that sticks up for the the situation. Right, right, right. Rather than actually like letting people talk and giving letting their stories, it all come which out. I think is people want to hear what it's actually what is it actually like. Now the sixteenth, we're right. going to have a community press conference mm -hmm. down in um, Negley at the. Uh, it's a East Palestine Country Club. Okay. So we're going to bring in as much media because we, the people, haven't been able to talk. Mm -hmm. we, you hear little segments or mm -hmm. you see Dr. Chai getting scolded by DeWine or mm -hmm. something like that. But we've heard from the EPA, the CDC. We haven't heard from the city politics in right. a long time because I think they're yeah. on a gag order personally. Right. I've, sent, I've sent my test results to to um, Mr. Conway mm -hmm. um, personally on his personal Facebook. He's mm -hmm. looked at it. He never even gave me a response mm -hmm. of, say, sorry that you're testing. Are you all right? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I mean, we, we've tried reaching out to him as well. Uh, and this is the mayor, uh, Mayor Conway. Uh, we've tried reaching out to him as well because I can't get into the details of this, but we're, we're close to breaking a, what I would say is a big story on a lot of this regarding the EPA regarding Norfolk Southern, some major discrepancies. The EPA has not been able to answer one of our really big questions here. They're responding to our emails, but they're not answering one key well, they're question. The and they're saying, they're, oh, we're working on it as quickly as we can. We're working on it as quickly as we can. And here we are two weeks later. They're still working as quick as they can. It should be a very simple It was even like the question. park. The places they, they tested when they had this Easter egg hunt, mm -hmm. there were seven spots that they tested. Not one of them pertained to anything that was going on at that right. point in time. They didn't test right next to the creek. Mm -hmm. They didn't test where it flooded. Right. They tested up on top of the hill or over by the dog thing. Right. They didn't test by where the kids were going to gonna play. Right. And then if you look at the dates mm -hmm. that the, the tests were right. done, and then it, 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 it's like, okay, well, that was after mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, we yeah, had a major flood. It's it's outrageous, and and at this point too. So, you know, the CDC is still saying you shouldn't get these tests. In reality, you should have all been having tests much more frequently, they much won. earlier on. And and right, and it's it's going to be hard to prove that. I've been speaking with a, a former EPA official. He's got decades on the job there. Um, uh, doesn't work there anymore. Uh, working on getting him on the record, but. Uh, you know, he's saying in a lot of cases, and this isn't everybody, but in a lot of cases, unfortunately, it seems as some of these people are, they won't do the test because if they don't do the tests and then you all don't test positive, it doesn't exist. It's a, exactly. Doesn't and then exist. people are, you know, I've talked to people where, well, you tested positive. Um, you know, we don't need to test positive. You know, we don't need that test. Listen, each one of our cases is individual. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks of class action, you know, getting these lawsuits. Listen, they're taking the data from each individual person, and mm -hmm. that's the way that they're going to work this. Right. They, don't, they don't understand the concept of what's going on here. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody thinks it's about money. No, I, I, to be personally honest, it is about money to a certain extent. We bought this house seven months ago now. Mm -hmm. Seven months ago. Our equity is... The, Minus seven thousand two hundred and one dollars. Minus eleven thousand. Uh, eleven thousand now. So in, in February, 
um, it was it, we we was eighteen thousand you know to to the plus yeah. on our equity. We can't rent this place out because right. I'll never get the mortgage out of it. Mm -hmm. We can't sell it right now because we'll lose right You'll tens lose of thousands yeah. of dollars. So we're stuck here because our income. She gets social security disability because mm -hmm. of her heart problem. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm I'm fighting workman's comp, mm -hmm. um, and so we have we have we was doing foster care. They took our kids out. Now the wine says it's safe, so they more or less here take, take these kids. Right. It's against everything that I stand for, and I keep saying this. I I, I don't know what what these kind so of they so they like took the kids out to because it was unsafe. But then they tell you it's safe in the same, in the same breath, essentially. When they took out they our took, kids because of the behaviors, mm -hmm. we're, we're, the, we're the behaviors that happen because okay, so it was behaviors that happen in at the hotels. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, so these are kids that I've had for years. Mm -hmm. They were my kids. Mm -hmm. They uh, came in. If the, if the train never derailed, mm -hmm. my kids would still be here today. Mm -hmm. I did, we did get one of our kids back mm -hmm. um, that they took out. So, I mean, that was a fight, mm -hmm. but we did, we did. But, uh, you know, it, not to change the subject, but yeah, I gotta okay. get this yeah. out there. So. I, I was a, I was a reg, I'm, a, I'm a registered nurse mm -hmm. of course I'm not working right now I'm on disability but um, so you know I guess what my point is is at 20 years old I was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis um, there's seven people in the whole world who have the type that I have I was in a study at the Cleveland Clinic um, I'm the only survivor my life expectancy they gave me was 45. I will be 48 in July, you know, and I fight every day to keep keep my health. Okay, that's just one little problem. Mm -hmm. I also have had uh, heart attacks. I have a pacemaker, a defibrillator. Mm -hmm. um, I've had back surgery due to medications that I was on that destroyed my bones. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I've beat cancer twice um, in a train derailment is what's going to do me in. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm scared. I, I'm, I'm scared. I'm fucking scared. I'm pissed. You know, and, and I get, I get no answers nowhere. But like I'm not, I'm not allowed to go down to the the, the center no more. Right. Um, because I said I was recording, and he was he was like pointing in my face and and I, I, I keep Norfolk yeah because I keep I keep saying if you piss somebody off they're gonna make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Well, they pissed me off and I made a mistake. So now she has to go down. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't go. I went down and asked them to reimburse me three paychecks, three pays. Mm -hmm. Okay. That we lost. The kids. That we, that we lost the kids. And um, they told me no. But yeah, they're giving people $25,000 if you uh, rent. I'm going to pay your, I'm going to pay for a year. Mm -hmm. I'm going to buy you all new furniture. Now, I know this for a fact, 100%, mm -hmm. okay? But if you own a house, they're not buying me new furniture. Right. They're not giving... Right. Doing it, anything it, it, for us. It's it seems like uh, the situation at the assistance center is very much like case by case basis. Is, yeah. If you go in one day and you talk to one person, you might get something. If you talk to another person, you're gonna get nothing. If you go in there and literally like cry, you might he get something. He actually told her on. that I walked out of the place. He told her that she's easier to deal with than me. Mm -hmm. You know, these these are the things that she's they're telling her. It's like. 
I'm easy to, she's easier to deal with because I push back. Mm -hmm. I don't ask your question. I don't ask questions. I I demanded what I, respectfully, mm -hmm. I've never disrespected not one of them guys down there because I knew they didn't have no part of this. Right, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's not and those you know what? Fault, right? They the, push your button so mad, bad, mm -hmm. like I, I dealt with it and dealt with it. That one day, it was a bad day, mm -hmm. and I made a mistake because he's pointing in my face, telling me I'm a liar. I'm like, have you recorded? Well, did I give you permission? I'm sorry, buddy. I said, but this is a one consent state. Right. I don't need your permission to record. Right. Don't need it. This right. ain't Pennsylvania. This ain't Maryland or uh, Atlanta, Georgia, where you come from. Right. So he waves the female cop over, and she goes, uh, you know, she goes to grab a hold of me. I'm like, am I being arrested or detained? I said, you know, and and I did. I cussed. Mm -hmm. Get your hands off me. Right. Um. And she did. And I walked out the door. Right. And. So she goes down there that day. Everything that he fought me on that day, mm -hmm. she walked in there, handed him the same information, mm -hmm. and guess what she came back with? The receipts that we turned in. Mm -hmm. he, he so they were, everything. they, okay, so I, I haven't relocated, mm -hmm. but I do leave for a few days or a week. Mm -hmm. You know, I do have to get out of this town. Yeah. Right, so I go down there and I'm telling them that they're like, well, we can't pay these unless you relocated. And I, they're like, but you relocated. I says, no, I, I stay with my mom or mm -hmm. I'll stay with my friend or his sister mm -hmm. here. And, you know, yeah. well, we can't pay that unless you've actually relocated. I, I'm like, but... I am. I'm not right. always it's out, there. It's, but yeah. they wanted me to say that I don't live there. Right. So then I was like, okay, I don't live there. Right. But they they made me tell them that to give me the money. Right. It's, it's but I'm outrageous. trying to be yeah. truthful. Right. 100% truthful. And they're like, well, we can't give you the money unless you say that you, got, you don't live there anymore. So it's like... The hoops that you all are having to jump through so to, to, to go... And well, the fact that you're having to jump through the hoops at all, and then that you're still having to go to Norfolk Southern for the money, to me, is a little outrageous. They're, they should not be the ones deciding whether or not your hotel stay is covered. Or they your should Airbnb. have bought some hotels that, and put us all in. Or that, that would have been much easier. But like the fact that there's not some sort of intermediary, like whether it be somebody from the state or the federal government or somebody that you go to and provide the receipts to, and like they give you the money immediately, or they give you a debit card immediately, and then they get the money back. But from I said, you don't need they, to deal with them. They yeah. want to give you a debit card. Yeah. We have no proof. Once they put that money on that card, mm -hmm. the only proof that they have is they have the proof of what we spent that money on. Mm -hmm. That's why I kept saying, I don't want your debit card. Mm -hmm. I want a check. I paid cash. Everything that I've right. done, and this is what people like. I get bashed from around town. I took the money out of my pocket. Mm -hmm. I paid for everything that we've done mm -hmm. so far. I got the thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Yes, for the inconvenience. Yeah. And I said this before on the other thing. Mm -hmm. Listen, we gave NS a billion dollar company an interest free loan and evacuated ourselves. Right. They owed me that that money. Right. I'll take that a thousand dollars. I know that the interest if I paid off is way more than a thousand dollars what we put out. So that that money's nothing. Everything else I've took out of pocket. Right. I, it, it financially has put us in a bind at this point in time in our lives. All right. And to your point, you can't, you know, if you wanted to leave, you're not going to be able to sell your house without losing money on it right now, if anyone would even buy it. Um, and you, you bought the house just months before the derailment, yep. which is obviously, I mean, that's that sucks. That's terrible timing of as far as, you know, ordinarily you buy a house and that's a nice, safe asset that will slowly go up in value over time. That's like a... You know, that's what everyone's told they should do. You know what I mean? Yeah. You buy a house, you do that. And then that essentially gets taken away from you by no fault of your own. Okay. Not that you've had the house and taken the away, but the upkeep on this house, it. it is six bedrooms. Mm -hmm. It is a, a large dining room. Right. But there's, Warrior, yeah. kitchen. And there's no we top. Have, we, have, we have a garage out back that has a two-bedroom apartment above mm -hmm. it. So, but, so when I was down at the center, mm -hmm. they said, why don't... You go get an Airbnb. I'm like, you know, they're like five thousand dollars a month, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But you won't pay me three pays. Right. But you'll pay 
five thousand for right. me to go live in an Airbnb. I'm not. I don't want your money. Right. I just want what you took from me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put. I don't want to take their money. Go stay in the like. It's not a money thing for me. I just want back what you guys took from me. Right. That's it. I'm not saying that I'm not suing them because I tell you what, I guarantee I'm suing the fuck out of them <laughs> because of the mental, like the the mental part of it. Let's put all the medical, mm -hmm. uh, like physical, house equity. What they have done to me mentally. I is criminal. That that that's it. Mm -hmm. I I have a therapist, you know, that I talk to almost every other day. I have massive panic attacks. I have ma major um, night terrors. Uh, like it's hard. P post Feb February second, I was the most happiest person in the world. I paint, I crochet, I make soaps, I am an artist, I have done nothing. I have lost the will to keep pushing every day because of this. And it, 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 no amount of money is ever going to make me right again, ever. I mean, maybe 20 years from now, you know, with the counseling, I ain't going to be here 20 years from now. I only had a short time left and they fucking took it from me. You know, my life is not guaranteed. You know, I know I, everyone has an expiration date, but mine, mine's shorter. And, and, you know, and I was in a great place and they took everything from me. No. So I'm sorry. No, no, no. Uh, I'm sorry that that's that you all are needing to go through all of this again. It's not. Uh, no one asked to be put in this situation. The fact that you all are needing to do all sorts of again jumping through all sorts of hoops to just get basic help is is outrageous. And from recent comments from the governor of Ohio, it sure seems to me like you know once this last track removal is is done in the next month and a half or so. Uh, it sure seems like the state of Ohio is kind of like, yep, job done. And you know uh, what's even worse about, like you saying about the one? It's the people and the politics. It's some of these people in this town. Like, they don't support, they, they live in their little rich house with mm -hmm. their, you know, air purifiers and whatever they want. And, and they're bashing us in. They're, they're trying to bring in business. We're the ones that gave them that business. Mm -hmm. I, I shopped local. I went to, I, I made a point to go to Doyle's. the gas station, mm -hmm. Doyle's. He's shutting down. McKim's is shutting down because they're not in this clique. Mm -hmm. you, you know, the businesses that's been in here, there's a couple that I don't understand why they're in the clique. But, um, you know, we get bashed by um, these people. I have a guy, he don't like my opinion, that has been in this town forever. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not even going to mention yeah, the names. Fine. But, um, you know, telling me to come down and he'll show me business and, and the, the rudeness that they've given us, um, some of us, because of our opinions, they don't know like Lori's story or my story or the foster kid's story or the, the people down the street story. So all they care about is that they don't like our opinions or how we feel and they, and they put us in a position where um, we're fighting amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right, it seems like there's a, a segment that is just like, let's just pretend everything's normal now. Yeah, um, yeah. And yeah, that's, that's, yeah. And that's the ones where they have the fat pockets. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 I said this last time, you know, some of these people that are on Social Security is not because of disability. Mm -hmm. Some of this is because of mental mm -hmm. or, you know, there, there's a lot of things in this town. You got old ladies that don't know how to fill out that paperwork or right. don't know how to push back mm -hmm. and be like, listen, I need this money because I can't make it on my $800 a month Social Security, right. you know, and, and, and they these people in this town, these businesses and these these other, the politics in this town are being like, so what? If you don't like it, we had one of our actual um, 
what do they call them? The council member. The council member. <laughs> sit there and say, if you don't like it, get out. Now, what? Listen, I don't have to get out. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, get out of your seats. Right. I, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. there, there's four people going up in December, mm -hmm. and hopefully they get filled by somebody different because this is the same thing. Even before this derailment, these businesses were struggling before this derailment. Right. And I, and I feel for, especially like the, the small businesses, I feel for the, the, some of the small oh, business too. owners. Absolutely. What Ashley you know? McKim did, mm -hmm. she built that. She has brought people over, had community swimming pool, mm -hmm. you know, brought in for Halloween, giving out honey and mm -hmm. these candy suckers and the things that she's done for this community mm -hmm. and for them to do what they did to her. Teenage dances, you know, something for the kids to do. Yeah, she had dances. Right. Um, bring in, she has know, the, is it the wine? The yeah. winery. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what they did to her, it was totally, it showed me right there that, listen, it don't matter who you are in this town if you're not in that little circle. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't bother. Yeah. Did you hear about the people that are getting um, fined for leave for um, oh, a for band, vacating homes for or vacating yeah. their homes? Yeah, when they're telling us to vacate, right? <laughs> we would all be mandatory on evacuation if if they didn't shut that railroad down. Right. Yeah, I mean the the whole the whole thing, whether it be again these this testing, whether it be you know the CDC explaining it, whether it be the lack of response. From the EPA, the confusing results from the EPA, them not answering basic questions, the governor, you know, uh, debacle and all of this. Uh, you know, the De DeWine said plenty of lies in the beginning of this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you caught him in that one lie, and it was like, <laughs> then he got mad at you. That that's the problem about it. Right. The, right, because it, I was asking a very basic question, yeah. and and he was. If, going, if they don't yeah. like your opinion, like, like they got me, like he got mad at Doctor Cha. Mm -hmm. If they don't like your opinion, and this goes for not only the politics, the people mm -hmm. in this town. If they don't like your opinion, then you're instantly you're yeah. bashed. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 kind of it's thing after thing. I'm I'm definitely interested in following up with you all, okay. especially after you do uh, it, once 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 you do these tests. I'm very curious, especially the phosgene one. We haven't seen. Uh, that being done before, um, I don't even understand what the phosgene is. You know, yeah, what I mean? so, yeah, phosgene. I mean, it was phosgene was literally used in I think World War One as like a it's like a, a mustard gas. Yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, it is a chemical byproduct of burned vinyl chloride. Um, it's one of the things that's created. So um, I'll be very curious to see um, see if that pops up anywhere. Um, I guess unless there's anything else you all want to share, no, I, I really appreciate. I you appreciate all the time. you guys coming in. Also, you know. Um, I, I I love what you guys are doing, um, and like I said, I appreciate you guys more than you you can imagine. I, if we don't get our stories out there, and people don't go get tested and and fight, stand up, even though that our opinions are different, mm -hmm. it, it don't matter if me and her opinion is different. Right. We're gonna stand beside each other, yeah. and we're gonna fight this in until we get the the way out. Mm -hmm. And that's all we want. We we want the way out. You you guys make me lose sleep at night because I watch <laughs> you. <laughs> you know, it's like quiet. Kids are everyone's. That's my time. I'm like, true. Let's go. <laughs> well, oh, that's thank you for watching. Yes, all the time. Thank all you all time. so much. Thank you guys for watching as well. Uh, thank you. Yeah.